This is the Life Enthusiast online radio and TV network, restoring vitality to you and to the planet. I'm Scott, he's Martin, and he's on one of those two sides. And uh, he happens to be on the west coast of Canada, or very close to the west coast of Canada, and I happen to be very close to the west coast of Morocco. <laughs> in North Africa. So we're really excited to be able to bring you this international uh, Facebook Live event streaming from around the world. And so, of course, we have we have people in the group that come from all places, Australia, South Africa, UK, UK Canada, United States, North Coast, South Coast, West Coast, East Coast. Yeah, there's one lady from UK just putting her hand up. Awesome. So what we want to do today is we want to talk about magnesium for the next 15 to 20 minutes, and then we're going to open it up for uh, any questions that you may have. So Martin, first, of, I guess the first question is, is why is magnesium important uh, to our health? Uh, there are essentially five or six major minerals or elements that constitute what we would know as the uh, electrolytes and you have calcium magnesium sodium potassium and then phosphorus sulfur and iron those are essentially the major ones and uh, uh, they're uh, the autonomic nervous system which is the uh, um, nerves that you don't voluntarily or willfully control by your brain the ones that control things that you can forget about, <clears throat> such as your breathing or your blood pressure or your heart beating or your digestion happening and things like that. That, that is called the autonomic nervous system. And uh, when we're told that 90% uh, of our brain is outside of our reach, that we don't use it, oh, it's working. It's busy. It's doing stuff. And it's, it's managing all of these things. And the... Um, the autonomic uh, nervous system has two branches, sympathetic and parasympathetic. And uh, the sympathetic is also known as the fight or flight. And the parasympathetic is also known as the rest, digest, and repair. And one of them is always in dominance. And so when you're in the fight or, or flight mode, the sympathetic, you're essentially trying to preserve your existence. You're, you're worrying about getting out of danger or, you know, the, the classic example in literature is um, there is a saber-toothed tiger you need to get away from, otherwise you're his lunch. The parasympathetic, on the other hand, is the side that looks after the long-term existence, the... Uh, the repair of damage and or feeding of cells. So when the parasympathetic has the upper hand, you're going to be digesting. Your blood pressure drops, you calm down, your cells will start eliminating toxins, your digestive system turns on, and so on. When the sympathetic kicks in, your blood pressure goes up, your pupils dilate so you can see better, your um, heart rate goes up, and so on. So in other words, so anyway, you're getting ready to fight it when you're in that state. And we're in that state pretty much all the time, which means our body never repairs itself, which means if we have a problem and it's causing us pain, it's going to continue and not even get better because our body hasn't gone into a state where it can actually start repairing itself. Right. And so if you are... Um, not sleeping well, that means you're staying sympathetic and the parasympathetic is not getting enough time to repair. And so you're aging faster, you're breaking down, you're tearing down and you're not restoring. We're supposed to have a um, activity time and then fix and repair time. And if it's not balanced, uh, it's shown as aging. Well, you can look at my face that I've had more sympathetic than parasympathetic over the years. If I was able to keep it in perfect balance, I'd be still looking 27 and I would uh, uh, be tireless and uh, I don't know what else. I, I wouldn't forget words and I would 
have zero pain anywhere and so on. And so the signaling system tells us that when there is a problem, we learn about it, we hear about it. The brain receives a signal. Anyway, so about the minerals. The autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic, is accelerated by calcium and decelerated by magnesium. In the other one, in the parasympathetic, it is uh, accelerated by sodium and decelerated by potassium. So what happens is this. If you are lacking in magnesium, you will be not able to relax, lengthen, open, and so on. Visualize a heartbeat. Every contraction is triggered by calcium. Every lengthening or opening is triggered by magnesium. So, for instance, when I move my muscle or arm like that, so this muscle here has contracted, but the opposing muscle, this one here on the bottom, had to lengthen. So bicep shortens, triceps lengthens. Here's the opposite, and so on. So, for instance, a professional athlete, when he's running, uh, his uh, quad is always stronger than the hamstring. And so if this fellow has uh, too much calcium and not enough magnesium, he will overpower the hamstring. The hamstring will not be able to relax fast enough in response to the power of the quad, and he'll rip a muscle. That's the most common injury in professional athletes, a torn hamstring. Why? Actually, for lack of magnesium, if you can believe it. So I would like to get actually into explaining what all happens or what all is affected by magnesium. When you have not enough magnesium, you're experiencing things such as anxiety, fatigue, tightness of muscles, twitches of muscles, uh, cramps of muscles, poor memory, seizures, vertigo, um, intestinal problems of, of the constipation kind, insomnia, incoordination, faintness, as in falling over, and then uh, at extremes, depression, confusion, ADD, and so on. And those, those are the symptoms, right? And then, of course, when this continues, you end up with illnesses that the uh, Western medicine would, uh, would have labels for. Um, ourselves here, we, we try to approach things from the functional perspective. We see things as uh, where at the cellular level is the problem arising. The modern medicine, the Rockefeller-sponsored uh, dominant medical modality, uh, sees mostly symptoms. They focus on the, at the organ level. The problem will be something like angina, anorexia, arrhythmia, asthma, <laughs> atherosclerosis, diabetes, eclampsia, emphysema, fibromyalgia, gallbladder, uh, migraines, kidney stones, intermittent claudication, uh, interstitial cystitis, viral infection, PMS, panic attack, osteoporosis, uh, reflex sympathetic dystrophy, stroke, of course, diabetes, eclampsia, and the major ones like chronic fatigue, cancer, cirrhosis, depression. Uh, those are all the names of the conditions that have been created by the deficiency at the functional level. Here, here's how we got here. Magnesium is actually um, normally acquired through food. There's supposed to be a balance between calcium and magnesium in our food intake. And for the most part, our soils where the foods are grown are fairly rich in calcium, but not so much in magnesium. There are, in fact, areas on the planet where the magnesium deficiency is really significant. Australia is one of them. Anyway, so depends where the food is grown. 
it will be deficient in minerals. And the industrial method of growing food with fertilizers, the NPK, which is nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, you don't hear the C-A-N-G in there, the calcium, magnesium. So the food will be deficient in magnesium. There's no chance that you will be able to actually have the food that you eat that's grown in the industrial style to be balanced well enough that you don't have to supplement. So now it will depend on your metabolic type, whether you need to supplement a little bit of magnesium or a whole lot of magnesium. So when you're deficient in magnesium, you're functionally staying too much in the sympathetic, not enough in the parasympathetic, meaning you're always tearing down, not building up enough. What happens in the body is this. The body will defend the blood at the expense of all peripheral organs. So the functional margins for the electrolytes in the blood will be this much calcium, this much magnesium, this much sodium, this much potassium, that will be tightly managed to be just right. But this will happen at the expense of the peripheral organs. So when your doctor takes your blood and tells you, well, everything's normal, yeah, in the blood it is. But even still, if you're if you're coming into the emergency room with a stroke or, or a heart attack, they will mainline straight into your uh, vein a bag of magnesium because that's what opens up. Calcium will hold things tight. Magnesium will open things up. Uh, the only way that you can find your long-term balances reliably that I know of, there may be others, but the way I know to do it is to do hair analysis. Because in your hair, uh, if we take an inch of your hair from somewhere here, what you end up knowing is what happened in the last month or so. You're growing about an inch a month. So uh, when we take this piece close to the skull, we can analyze that and see just how the balances are. So you do a hair analysis and you can start interpreting as to what's going on in the body. But it's not 100% reliable because, of course, this is only showing what the body is pushing into the hair. Still, compared to others, we can get some understanding of all that. How can we, how can we get in our bodies if it's not in our foods? And I know that if we take magnesium, basically they flush right through. Right, yeah, important. <clears throat> so what happens, of course, is that the body is having to defend the balance in the blood very carefully. So when you ingest things, you take it through the, uh, through the mouth, stomach, it hits the intestine, and pretty quickly it's going into the digestive system. So if you ingest large amounts of these minerals all at once, it, it just upsets the balance. It's a spike in the blood, so the body has to get rid of it, and the kidneys will filter it out. And if it's even a larger amount, you just cause the diarrhea. Like magnesium is actually a famously effective um, way of inducing diarrhea. Or, I mean, if you're constipated, you take magnesium to level of comfort, but if you want to just clean out you just push it past that point and you can you know two three teaspoons of magnesium chloride and everything comes out within 10 minutes it's fairly quick is it dangerous if you like that martin not that we're recommending that you do but if you actually accidentally took a little too much magnesium would it cause damage no i just discomfort i mean i've played with it myself so <laughs> When you take uh, too much magnesium, well, don't get in your car. Wait until this whole thing is resolved. You need, you will need about half an hour to maybe an hour. <laughs> because when it comes on, it comes on with intensity that does not allow you. That, that's non-negotiable. It's coming out. 
Okay, so what's the best way to get more magnesium so we're no longer deficient in it? So when you're taking it in smallish amounts, like in food, that's just fine. But if you have already built up a deficiency, now you need to try and supplement to make up the difference. And uh, so taking it by capsules is very slow. Um, therefore, the only other available option is through the skin, topical. So you can actually create foot soaks or full body baths or rub it on. And uh, so we have made available bath crystals and uh, and also have it in in special preparation that you can actually rub on your skin. So here comes an interesting bit. <clears throat> the most common or the easiest uh, available supplement is Epsom salts, which is magnesium sulfate. It's an MG2SO4. And uh, you can use it in a bath. You can use it in foot soak. You can even use it orally. Certainly you can swallow it. No trouble there. Um, we have opted for using magnesium chloride. Magnesium chloride is uh, more, more powerful, stronger, about twice as much magnesium compared to the uh, sulfate, the Epsom salt. And it's also more compatible in the sense that the chloride is used in the digestive system, as in hydrochloric acid in your stomach that, that uses up the chloride that comes with the magnesium. So if I'm in a uh, magnesium salt bath and I'm absorbing all this magnesium chloride, basically the magnesium then gets absorbed into the skin. It gets transported to wherever it needs. And the chloride part of that my bath, it gets used in my digestive system. That's right. Yes. Yeah, so it's efficient. But one more thing to be said about how we make this the magnesium oil or magnesium gel that we offer on Life Enthusiast website has also been treated energetically, or the water that it's in has been treated energetically. So it's actually more penetrable through the skin. What we have done is we have reduced the surface tension of the fluids. When you reduce surface tension, it, it makes it uh, easier to go through barriers. The other thing we've done is we've reduced the cluster size. So when you reduce clustering, it's actually easier for the material to get into the cells, intracellular. So it's way more efficient where uh, a teaspoon of the uh, magnesium chloride, magnesium oil is sufficient. You need to use, um, I don't know, close to a cup of the Epsom salts from the store to get a similar effect. So what will most people experience if they do, like I really love doing the magnesium salt bath. You run the nice hot water, you put the salt in it, it all disappears, you, you lay down, and I just find it very, very relaxing. But uh, if someone's got, say, fibromyalgia or they've got chronic pain or aches, what are some of the things that they could, ex could experience? Obviously, everybody's different if they do the magnesium bath. Well, the most common comment I hear is... Uh... I took half a cup of the magnesium crystals, put it in the bath, and I slept like a baby. I didn't need to take my fill in the blanks, Lunesta, or whatever it is that they, they have been depending on to, uh, to go to sleep or have a decent sleep. Because now that there's magnesium in the system, the parasympathetic gets the upper hand, rest, repair, digest, and the body's stress response is shut off you have a peaceful all-night sleep it's shocking and of course the other things that happen is when you're having this peaceful sleep you're actually repairing you're restoring so you're going to wake up more refreshed than otherwise because if you have a stressed fitful shallow sleep you you don't repair as much so you wake up less refreshed or more tired in the morning. And of course, people who suffer from all, all out insomnia, um, they roll around in their bed all night long, but don't feel any better for it in the morning. What we've talked about basically is 
there's not enough magnesium in your diet, so you're deficient on it. If you, particularly if you've got white flour in your diet, white sugar in your diet, and it, you're not, uh, say, eating organic, because our whole processing food system basically took out. And the result, of course, is that we're constantly in this fight or flight, high tense, uh, stressful situation, uh, lifestyle. And of course, our body then cannot repair itself. And if we have magnesium, we're able to get into sort of the relaxation, the rebuilding stage. And of course, we all know that if you take a pill to fix something, it's, you know, 50 bucks a pill or a hundred or a thousand dollars a pill or some outrageous amount. And no doubt, uh, Martin, what we're talking about with magnesium crystals is also incredibly expensive. Right. It's not. So the uh, it's not. <laughs> the magnesium oil that we sell is $20 for 96 servings. And, uh, and if you want to buy it by the gallon, that's, uh, what is it, six, 800 servings for $80. Right. So it's very, very inexpensive, which is why nobody wants to talk to you about it. Well, nobody in the medical system. What what a typical uh, pharmaceutical representative, also known as MD, will uh, recommend is calcium channel beta blocker. Well, why would they use a calcium channel blocker when all they need is the natural antagonist, which is natural magnesium mineral, right? The, the seesaw, calcium up, magnesium down. <clears throat> so instead of trying to push down on the calcium, you could just try and raise the magnesium. Simple. So instead of a 20 cent solution, you end up with a $20 solution with the pills and uh, with a natural downside of toxic drugs rather than something natural that your body knows how to process without any damage or penalty. Anyway, so uh, blood pressure, for instance, is one of the inflammatory symptoms, and you can reduce or normalize blood pressure by adjusting the calcium-magnesium balance. The other balance, of course, is the sodium-potassium which we didn't want to focus on here, but doctors will naturally tell you that you should reduce your sodium intake without telling you that you could also fix it by increasing your potassium intake, which is naturally present in apple cider vinegar or in bananas or all fruits, really. So... Right. So if somebody, for example, has fibromyalgia and they find that having getting in and out of the bath is too painful. Um, well, if you want to use the crystals, you can use them in a foot soak. Uh, they set up a one gallon, two gallon bucket of warm water and put some of the crystal salt in that. Or if that's not convenient, get the magnesium oil and just take a teaspoon and rub it, rub it on your belly, your legs, somewhere, anywhere on the skin. It'll absorb over the next hour or so, do its right. job. So it's okay. best to use, it's, go ahead. I just wanted to jump in because someone made a comment about Epsom salts and we had talked about it earlier, but I could go down to my local drugstore and I could buy a bag of Epsom salts, but it's gonna be about a 20th as effective as getting really good magnesium salts, is that right? Yeah, in, in general, the uh, magnesium stuff that we sell, which is the magnesium crystal, the chlorides, uh, you will need a lot less of it to accomplish the same thing. Plus, we have it energetically um, worked on for the surface tension and the cluster sizing that I mentioned earlier. So it will be more effective. Cool. All right. So, uh, Martin, are there any last comments about magnesium? And if not, we'll uh, wrap up this part of it and go on to just uh, some Q&As. No, I, I think I've said it all. It's, it's an easy to get, little talked about, mainly because there's not a whole lot of money to be made on baseline requirements for managing your health. Right. So if you have pain, if you have uh, any problems at all, and then particularly if you are stressed out, there's nothing like a hot magnesium bath to uh, 
change you from being all stressed to being all relaxed, then your body can actually start to heal itself. Just imagine if you had a cut on your arm and it never healed. And then you got a second cut a couple of weeks later on your arm and it never healed. In a lifetime, what would be the result? Is you would have all these cuts and they'd be painful on your arm. And so you need to be able to put yourself in a position where you can relax, where you can rest, where your body can recharge itself, can repair itself, can start healing itself. And one of the reasons why it can't is you are deficient in magnesium. And for $15 or $20, you can be abundant in magnesium, totally relaxed, and on the way to repairing your body. So right. in the, the carton. I was going to say, in the comments below, I put a link to uh, to the product that we recommend on lifeenthusiast.com. And uh, we're going to also... I just want to say one more thing. Okay. It's it's as in to answer when a person would use it. And it's whenever you would like the parasympathetic to get the upper hand. So typically, that would be after lunch. So you can have a little siesta especially after dinner when you want to go and digest and then have a nice sleep. But you could also use some just before any strenuous event. Like if you're, going, for instance, going to play soccer or play hockey or be, a, be an athlete of any sort, have a physical exertion, you would want to put that on because that's going to help balance your body so that you're more relaxed. Like You could watch... a a cat, like a cheetah, run in, I don't know, I don't see them where I live, but I remember vividly the fact that these things are running elegantly and relaxed. Like there's, there seems to be no stress even when they are running at full tilt. Whereas you watch the uh, sports events where athletes compete, they're clenching and doing stuff like that. Just forcing it if they had sufficient magnesium on board they would be more like the cheetah because they would not be fighting themselves they would have a peak performance without stress and that's when you want to use the magnesium before strenuous activity and whenever you want to shut down relax repair and restore right and so the answer to you question yeah the magnesium chloride is more permeable than the Epsom salts that you get in the grocery store and you can do it once a day you can do it more often if you want and um, I would I would say 20 minute bath on average would be about what people would want to do yes every few days like I mean every day if you're in bad shape and you're you have a lot of pain and you're really stressed out and you know that you need a lot of repair being done but uh, you know, I, what I found was once or twice a week, I would just take a nice soak, get a book, soak for 20 minutes it, until actually I would soak until the water got cold and I had to get out, to be quite hmm. honest. And then I would go to bed. So that's usually when I did it. Right. Yes. Yeah, so the, chloride, the magnesium chloride yeah, the is better than the magnesium sulfate. D. That's right. Yeah, and the dosage of that, you you would probably want to have about 600 milligrams of elemental magnesium at a time, which is about a teaspoon of the fully saturated magnesium oil as we sell it. Um, a handful of the uh, salts, you know. Um, yeah, a third of a cup in a bathtub. Okay. So if you have pain, if you have uh, any problems at all, and then particularly if you are stressed out, there's nothing like a hot magnesium bath to uh, change you from being all stressed to being all relaxed, then your body can actually start to heal itself. Just imagine if you had a cut on your arm and it never healed, and then you got a second cut a couple of weeks later on your arm and it never healed. In a lifetime, what would be the result? Is you would have all these cuts and they'd be painful on your arm. And so you need to be able to put yourself in a position where you can relax, where you can rest, where your body can recharge itself, can repair itself, can start healing itself. And one of the reasons why it can't is you are deficient in magnesium. And for $15 or $20, you can be abundant in magnesium totally relaxed and on the way to repairing your body. So right. 
in the, the carton. I was going to yeah, say sorry. in the comments below, I put a link to uh, to the product that we recommend on lifeenthusiast.com. And okay. uh, we're going to I, I just want to say one more thing. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's as in to answer when a person would use it. And it's whenever you would like the parasympathetic to get the upper hand. So typically that would be after lunch. So you can have a little siesta especially after dinner when you want to go and digest and then have a nice sleep. But you could also use some just before any strenuous event. Like if you're going, for instance, going to play soccer or play hockey or be a, be an athlete of any sort, have a physical exertion, you would want to put that on because that's going to help balance your body so that you're more relaxed. Like you could watch a, a cat, like a cheetah, run in, I don't know, I don't see them where I live, but I remember vividly the fact that these things are running elegantly and relaxed. Like there's, there seems to be no stress even when they are running at full tilt. Whereas you watch the uh, sports events where athletes compete, they're clenching and doing stuff like that. Just forcing it if they had sufficient magnesium on board they would be more like the cheetah because they would not be fighting themselves they would have a peak performance without stress and that's cool. when you want to use the magnesium before strenuous activity and whenever you want to shut down relax repair and restore right and so the answer to question yeah the magnesium chloride is more permeable than the Epsom salts that you get in the grocery store and you can do it once a day you can do it more often if you want and um, I would I would say 20 minute bath on average would be about what people would want to do yes every few days like I mean every day if you're in bad shape and you're you have a lot of pain and you're really stressed out and you know that you need a lot of repair being done but uh, you know, I, what I found was once or twice a week, I would just take a nice soak, get a book, soak for 20 minutes it, until actually I would soak until the water got cold and I had to get out, to be quite honest. <laughs> and then I would go to bed. So that's usually when I did it. Right. Yes. Yeah, so the, chloride, the magnesium chloride yeah, the is better than the magnesium sulfate. The, that's right. Yeah, and the dosage of that, you you would probably want to have about 600 milligrams of elemental magnesium at a time, which is about a teaspoon of the fully saturated magnesium oil as we sell it. Um, a handful of the uh, salts? In a... um, yeah, a third of a cup in a bathtub. Okay, yeah. So, I usually just yeah. pour it, but it would be about a third of a cup is what I would pour. Yeah. And yeah, okay. we can definitely use the life enthusiast magnesium salts in your bath. D. Yeah, interchangeably. Bath, internal. I mean, we don't advertise it as internal, but it's safe. We use uh, hospital grade or USP grade materials, so it's, it would be safe enough to inject, never mind ingest. It's pure, uh, no contamination. Thank you, Martin. Really appreciate you sharing that information about magnesium and its impact on our health. You've been watching the Life Enthusiast online radio and TV network, restoring vitality to you and to the planet. Thanks for joining us, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.